What's going on, boys and girls? Welcome to Gem Mint Collectibles. I am your host, Gem Mint. Yes, I have a lot of tattoos. Yes, I'm rocking a Bone Thugs and Harmony shirt, BTNH for life. And yes, I love comic books. Today, we're going to take a look at the top 20 most valuable Todd McFarlane keys out there. So stay tuned. <laughs> All right, guys, this is a list uh, that I whipped up. I did not include any signature series or remarked books. It's kind of like cheating when you want to talk about value. I'm looking at CGC 9.8 when it comes to value. So there's a book in here that's pretty high up because of that. Anyway, let's start with the list. Let's jump right into it. Todd McFarlane, one of my favorite artists of all time. Spider-Man, Venom, Carnage, all-time favorites. We're going to jump in at the bottom of the list at number 20. We have Infinity Inc. issue number 14. This is Todd McFarlane's first published cover that he's ever done. It was done for DC Comics, and it sells for about $50 in a 9.8. Not the most expensive book by far, but it's something that I really wanted to highlight because it's his first published cover. 19 on the list, we got Incredible Hulk number 330. This is Todd McFarlane's first published work for Marvel Comics. It's the first time he's done the Hulk, and it sells for about $75 in a 9.8. It's a great book to own. You can find it for very cheap, uh, and it's great for a Todd McFarlane comic book collector. Number 18 on the list, we got Detective Comics 576. This is Todd McFarlane's first work on Batman. It was part of Batman's Year 2 storyline. A 9.8 copy of this sells for around $80. So again, nothing too crazy, but definitely one of the key issues that you want in your collection. Number 17 on the list, we have Spawn 1. This was Todd McFarlane breaking away from Marvel and DC, co-founding Image Comics, and coming with his own creation, Spawn. This book sold 1.7 million copies, and it spawned a franchise that's still ongoing to this day, an HBO series, movies, a toy line, which built his empire even bigger than comics. And you can get a 9.8 for around $100. They were selling for a little bit more when the Spawn reboot movie starring Jamie Foxx was kind of being announced. But it's cooled down since then. If you want to cheat and go for the newsstand edition in a 9.8, that's going to go more of around $400. But that's just a little honorable mention. Number 16 on the list, we have Coyote 11. Coyote 11 contains Todd McFarlane's first published work in comics. Little known fact. Little known book, but it's about $200 and a 9.8. So if you're a Todd McFarlane purist, it's definitely one you want in the collection. Number 15 on the list is one of my personal favorite comic book covers of all time. It's Amazing Spider-Man 316. It's the first full cover appearance of Venom. We say first full because he does have a little head in the prior issue, 315, with Hydro Man on the cover. But this is an iconic Spider Man cover, Venom defeating Spider Man, and it's gonna cost you about 225 and a 9.8. Awesome book to own. Number 14 on the list, Amazing Spider Man. This is issue 299. This is the first cameo appearance of Venom. You get a nice full panel of him on the last page. I know that you see his hand in the Web of Spider Man book, but this is the official first cameo of Venom, and a 9.8, it's also going to run you around 225-ish. Number 13 is the issue prior, Amazing Spider-Man 298. Not only is this the first cameo appearance of Eddie Brock, who becomes Venom in the next issue, this is Todd McFarlane's first work on the Spider-Man title. Spider-Man is really what got him to where he is today. Uh, and spawned his own Spider-Man series, which led to Spawn, and so on. This is a great book to own, and it's going to run you about $300 in a 9.8. Number 12 is going to go back to DC with Batman 423. This is about a $345 book and a 9.8. An iconic Batman cover with that red background and that big cape swooping. You can see a lot of Spawn's influence taken from this. And it's the Batman book to own from Todd McFarlane for sure. Not really much happening in the issue, but the cover alone just makes it a classic. Number 11, we're going back to Incredible Hulk, but this is the iconic Hulk cover. Issue 340 with Hulk fighting Wolverine. This is another one that it's not really a key issue, but the cover is just so iconic that it makes it a key issue. And a 9.8, you're looking at about $400. Now, this has fluctuated over the years. It's gone very high. There's been low sales, but that's where it's averaging right about now at the time of recording this video. One of my favorite covers of all time as well. Halfway through the list, and we're coming up on a crazy kind of reprint. Marvel Collectible Classics Spider-Man number two is a reprint that came out a few years later from the original issue. The thing that's cool about this reprint is it's almost a variant of his Spider-Man number one, which was another top selling comic book. 
uh, except this was chromed out, straight 90s style, and it had the Spider-Man 13 uh, symbiote version on the back of the slab, which just made it so much better for me. This book on a 9.8 has sold for upwards of about $1,500, but at the time of this video, it's averaging out to be about $550. Uh, a lot of people call it Spider-Man 1 Chromium Edition or Chromium Variant, but the reprint was actually Marvel Collectible Classics Spider-Man. There is another one that we'll talk about later in this list, and there was also X-Men Chromium Variants as well. So number nine is one of them that I wouldn't have put on the list if I had to go off of memory, because it's a little bit more modern. It is a retailer incentive variant, and it's for Venomverse number one. They're calling these the remastered variants. Uh, they took a panel from Venom and Amazing Spider-Man and made it the cover for this variant. This Venomverse variant, uh, averaging about $700 in a 9.8, not too many sales and not much data to go off of, but it is a dope cover and, and remastered like it is, so it's definitely up there on the list. Number eight is Malibu Sun 13. This, a lot of purists like to call Spawn's first appearance, but it's actually like a previews book. And Spawn 1 is on the cover, and it came out sh very shortly before the actual issue of Spawn 1. Being that Spawn 1 sold 1.7 million copies, there's a lot of them out there. And if you're a collector, you know, if it ain't rare, it ain't valuable. That's why collectors like to go for Malibu 13, because there are not nearly as many copies around out there. Uh, 9.8 averaging about $750. Technically, Spawn's first appearance, but an ad. Number seven on the list, we have Spider-Man 1 back at it. This time, it's the gold cover. But it's not just the gold cover. It's the UPC Newsstand Edition, which was a Walmart exclusive. I just mentioned from Malibu 13 that scarcity and rarity is everything when it comes to collectibles. The fact that there were millions of that Spider-Man 1 out there and that the second print or the B cover was gold... That's all well and good. This one has a barcode, the other ones don't, and there's less of it out there. A 9.8 is still averaging about $770 for this version. Number six, we're back at Marvel Collectible Classics, but this time it's issue one, and this time it's a reprint of Amazing Spider-Man 300. Just like Marvel Collectible Classics number two, this one has ASM 301 on the back, so it's chromed out, front and back, looks great in a slab. This one also has sold for up to $1,500 as well. But as of this time, it's averaging about 800 bucks. Number five on the list, we're back with Spawn 1, but this time it's a variant. And this is a variant kind of before variants. Five years after Spawn 1 came out, Todd McFarlane released a retailer one per shop incentive for Spawn, I think it was somewhere in the 50s or 60s for a black and white version of Spawn 1. Limiting the book to only that retailer incentive means there's a lot less of them out there, and that black and white edition is still averaging $1,200 to this day. Number four, it's Amazing Spider-Man 301. It's not a key issue, it's not even an expensive issue. You could find this for very cheap in a dollar bin anywhere. The thing is, it's very hard to get it in a 9.8. I don't know if it was a black back, the white front, or if it was just a beat up book, but somewhere along the line of CGC collecting, it was realized that the census was showing very low 9.8s compared to other books around that time. That being said, if you do see a 9.8, it's averaging about $1,200 as well. And I actually owned one for about 700 bucks a couple years ago, but I ended up getting rid of it. In a 9.6, it's not really worth anything. It's just one of those reasons why CGC changed the game of buying and collecting comics. If it's not a 9.8 certified by them, it doesn't reach a premium. This is probably one of the biggest examples of that. Number three, we have Venom number one, the remastered retailer incentive. This is a panel from Amazing Spider-Man 299, the first cameo of Venom, remastered with a colored background for the cover of this comic book. Surprisingly, it's still averaging about $1,500. It's very rare and it's very sought after from collectors. Again, if I would have made this list off the top of my head, it's not even one that would have been on my radar. I have seen it come out before, but I don't really pay attention to like the one out of 1,000 variants or what have you, one out of 100, but it deserves to be on the list. Number two, this is the third and last time we're gonna have Spider-Man 1 on the list. This is the Platinum Edition. This is also a retailer incentive, but done back in the day, way before we had these ratio variants. It's averaging $1,700 in a 9.8. This is a dope book. I did own this one time in the past, but in a 9.6, it's kind of cool to collect all those Spider-Man 1 covers, but it can be expensive. Because Spider-Man 1 had these multiple covers, it is actually one of the highest selling comic books of all time. 2 point million copies sold. It's cool that McFarlane's part of two of the most highest selling comics of all time with Spawn 1 and Spider-Man 1. None of them touch our boy Jim Lee and Scott Williams with X-Men 1 though. 
but still, it's a lot of copies. Number one on the list, if you didn't guess it from the beginning, <laughs> you guessed it when uh, when we were getting close to the end here. Amazing Spider-Man 300, the first full appearance of Venom, an iconic anniversary cover, cover swiped to death, averaging $2,000 to this day when it was going up and down with the Tom Hardy Venom stuff. Used to be a $1,000 book in a 9.8. It's doubled, and that's kind of where it's leveled off. We'll probably see another spike as they've just announced the director for the sequel to Venom. But uh, still the number one most valuable Todd McFarlane key to own for one of my favorite characters, one of the dopest uh, Spider-Man keys out there. Anyway, that's my top 20 books for the most valuable Todd McFarlane key issues. Now, there might be some other ones in there that I'd looked over, uh, maybe some amazing Spider-Man that are comparable in, in value, but I really wanted to highlight Infinity Inc. and Coyote and spread out some love and some importance to the issues. Let me know what you think about the list in the comments below. Drop that like because you know your boy done earned it. Make sure to subscribe to the channel for more daily content and stay minty fresh. Peace. Boom, 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 boom.